We're seeing the deportation happen right now. These guys just got off the bus. They're handcuffed from their hands and their wrists. The officers are removing those shackles, putting them back on the bus, and then they'll cross over to Mexico. But what happens after deportation? We've reported on the arrests of undocumented immigrants and what it's like to visit your loved ones in detention. But not much is known about what takes place after someone is sent back to the country where they were born. We cross the border to find out what life looks like in Mexico for those who've just been deported. These guys just got off the bus. They were deported today. You can see they have their stuff in their hands and we want to see if we can talk to him. No logré llegarme. Cuando iba cruzando ilegalmente, me agarró de la, la, la migración y, y, y estuve dos meses y medio prisionero. Y ahorita me acaban de, de deportar. ¿Qué vas a hacer ahora? Ahora me voy a regresar a, a mi lugar de origen, a mi calle. Those with money hop on buses or in cabs. Others are taken to shelters and government vans to get meals and services. The first stop for many seeking help is the Kino Border Initiative. So we offer here two meals a day, clothing, pastoral support, and a variety of services thanks to other nonprofit organizations in the area. Can you give me um, an idea of who comes here? Who are the people that need these services? Uh, the majority have just crossed the desert. We also see people have been, and, and this has been increasing, uh, people who have been living in the United States without documents for many years, maybe 25, 30 years, perhaps longer. And so they're really from the United States. For them, I'd say for many, Mexico is really a foreign country. And it's a very disorienting and traumatic experience for them. Myra had been living in the U.S. for 30 years. She chose to be deported after her epileptic seizures weren't properly treated in Eloy Detention Center. What was the crime that you committed? I was raped. I took the knife the, he was assaulting me with. I defended myself, I cut him. And because the assault happened at his home, where his family was in other rooms, and they all testified against me. I went to jail. While on probation, Myra was turned over to ICE for an expired green card. She's now in a country she hasn't seen since she was 12. Deportations are expected to rise under President Trump. The shelters we visited haven't seen higher numbers yet, but they have noticed that more of the people being deported had lived in the U.S. for decades. Recently deported men who need a place to sleep are taken by the government to this neighborhood. Here at the Juan Bosco shelter, Gilda Lorero and her husband Juan have been feeding and housing deportees since 1982. So this is the Mexican government right now dropping off um, a bunch of people who've recently been deported and they're coming in here for some shelter. On this night, we watched two different groups of men dropped off. Those who'd been held in U.S. detention and those who'd been caught trying to cross the border. The detainees had their belongings returned to them in garbage bags, while those caught crossing still had their backpacks. Jose was a permanent resident who'd lived in the U.S. for 39 years. He was caught for drug possession and chose to be deported rather than remain in detention. This is the only stuff you brought with you to Mexico. Exactly. This is all you have in your life at this point. Yep. What's in the bag? It's just uh, stuff from, from the detention center, my Bible, the sweater I got picked up with, another Bible. You ever think you'd see the day where you're carrying your life around in a trash bag? Not like this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I knew I was messing up, but I didn't think I was messing up to the point where I was gonna get deported like this, you know? So you have no money, you have no cell phone. How do you plan to go about getting on your two feet again here? Just hopefully find some work, you know, help out here and there, just do odd jobs type of thing. And that. But money-wise, yeah, I gotta really... Start from scratch? Yeah, scratch, literally. That's a reality those like Roberto know all too well. He was deported under President Obama in 2012. <laughs> Una luz psicodélica. 
Roberto lived in Tucson for 15 years and worked installing air conditioners. Una vez cuando venía de mi trabajo me detuvo una, una patrulla una patrulla de ahí del de Tucson Police y no traía una una luz roja de mi carro y me llevaron arrestado porque no tenía la licencia de de americana. What do you want Americans to understand about people like you who want to be in the U.S. and who are there working but got deported. Yo entiendo que no todos los, los inmigrantes son, son honestos o son buenas personas, ¿no? Hay de todo. De hecho, pues, por algo también tienen su seguridad en Estados Unidos porque, pues, por el terrorismo, tráfico, drogas, todo eso. Por ese lado yo entiendo, ¿no? Pero, por ejemplo, personas, por ejemplo, que nos detienen sin tener un récord criminal, Yo estaba haciendo mis taxis, yo, yo iba a corriente siempre con todo y trabajaba bien, o sea, yo nunca tuve problemas y, y me deportaron. Cuando estoy aquí en la casa como que me da más, um, como que me da más sentimiento, como que me da tristeza. Mi señor está allá en Estados Unidos y no puede venir aquí. Si me voy y me agarran, voy a estar dos años ahora en prisión. Es puro tiempo perdido, o sea. Dije, no, mejor me voy a poner aquí a trabajar aquí, un patrimonio, no sé. Throughout Mexico, there are countless others like Roberto, people who lived in the U.S. for decades and are now having to rebuild their lives. It's likely that under Trump, there'll be many more to come. So that's a glimpse of what life looks like after someone is deported to Mexico. Make sure you check out our entire immigration series, which also looks at the fears undocumented folks in the U.S. have of arrests and detention.